Dragon, Dick Togo, the list is endless, but great athletes nonetheless. Here's Jason Cross, another fine British athlete. Do you want to tell us just a bit about Jason Cross, Kenny? Well, Jason's been taking a lay long layoff this year. He's had some a bad injury to his knee, I believe. No, it's his back. His lower back, I understand. Lower that, back, yes. which he, he hit a topic, a topic on heel. And uh, his opponent wasn't there. And he landed bad. That was out in Tennessee Mountain Wrestling. And uh, ever since, he's had a terrible back injury and he's been kept out. Speaking of knee injuries, though, I think this man just coming out has been hit with a terrible knee injury all year. Yes, Ross, this, this athlete is one of the toughest, most tenacious athletes in the world. This is former Triple Crown holder in ECW, the loser, Mikey Whipwreck. Of course, Mikey Whipwreck is the only, and I say that again, the only wrestler to have held the world television title one half of the world tag titles and the world heavyweight title in ECW. Other wrestlers have done the triple crown, but not when all the titles have been world titles. That's an important fact to remember, Kenny. Yes, indeed, Ross. And of course, Mikey's also a former holder of the European Wrestling Association European Junior Heavyweight title. So he's held just about every title he's ever contended for. It's important to know though, Kenny, that European Junior Heavyweight title isn't just an EWA belt. It is multi-promotional, cross-promotional title. It isn't just an EWA title. That's right, Ross. As we saw there, Mikey doing the familiar bang-bang gesture of his former partner and former best friend, Cactus Jack. Yep, Mikey, as many people know, is in fact Cactus Jack's protege. Yeah, Mikey, Mikey really is uh, the ultimate product of the extreme environment. He's, he started off working as a building rings for ECW, then got in the ring, started to learn a few moves, and eventually got trained by some of his best friends in the promotion, and has quickly turned into Ross over the last few years, one of the best young wrestlers in the world. Certainly. We'll shut up for a second, Kenny, just as we listen to the ring announcements. So as you were saying, Kenny, both men are really one to climb up the ladder of success here in the EWA. That's and of right. course, a big dream tournament tonight, going all the way even, would certainly see them jump up the ladder. Mikey has been tough pushed to make it up into the upper echelons of ECW since his reoccurring knee injury. And Jason Cross, well, Grabbing those two titles from Jason Cross would simply elevate his career unfathomable amounts. That's right, Ross. Mikey, of course, suffering from that knee injury. Of course, he's had knee problems in the past. But this most recent injury, of course, suffered at the hands of Just Incredible just a few months ago. And he's really suffering walking on that knee. I saw him coming into the building earlier on. He needed a huge brace on his knee. I don't know if we can see it there. But Mikey's in a lot of pain out there. Jason, of course, as we said earlier on, has suffered a severe back injury that's kept him out of wrestling for most of last year. And so this, this match could really be a contest more of who's more injured rather than who is the better wrestler. That's exactly true, Kenny. But while Mikey Whitwreck's knee is very visible to the, to the crowd and to us, Jason Cross's back doesn't really seem to be giving him much problems at the moment. No, that's true, Ross, but... Uh, Mikey, of course, as we know, is one of the gutsiest, most toughest competitors we've ever seen in this sport of professional wrestling. He certainly is one of the most tenacious wrestlers on the planet. And I don't see that knee injury slowing him down one bit. Let's if call the action a bit now, Kenny. Mikey goes for the cover. One, two. A two count there by Mikey Whitbreak. And what's his another cover? Just gets a one count there. Jason Cross this time goes for the cover. One, two. 
Both men going for quick covers once to get this match over. That's a Beal throw there, or as some people call it, a Mexican arm drag. And it sends Jason Cross out to the floor. And I don't think he wants to be there. Even with Mikey's knee injury, he's bound to get these great fans aerial. for money here. He is a great aerial competitor, and there he hits a Toby Con Hilo. A Toby Con Hilo there. As by was, Mikey Whitbreak off the apron. As I was saying there, Ross, Mikey always wants to give the fans value for money. And no matter how much his knee is hurting him, he's going to give it everything he's got in this match. As you saw just there with that terrific Topic on Hilo on just Jason Cross. That's completely correct. Mikey Whitbreak could easily have backed out of this tournament and easily got about coming over to Britain for the European Wrestling Association St. Valentine's Day Massacre. But not only is he greedy and hungry for the success but he wants to give all the fans their money's worth a philosophy I'm sure taught to him by the legendary Cactus Jack yes indeed so Ross I think most of these ECW wrestlers really want to give the fans what they can and Mikey is no exception Mikey sent off the ropes and oh dear that knee must be getting worse because Mikey even the momentum won't carry Mikey across the ring and Jason Cross stomps on that knee. Yes, Ross, this has really got to be troubling for Mikey and for the EWA officials. Do they stop the match? Do they say Mikey can't continue? Or do they let Mikey carry on, despite the fact that he may suffer a very serious, possibly even career-ending knee injury there. here tonight? That, that's completely correct there, as Jason Cross works on, on Mikey Whitbrick. He's got a chin lock there, trying to sap the energy out of Mikey Whitbrick. Restricting the breathing there. At the moment, it seems strange that he's going after Mikey's neck area when a oh, crucifix. But he goes into crucifix there. A two count. As I was saying, it's strange that he should attack Mikey's knee. Oh, well, attack Mikey's neck when his knee's so vulnerable. But there, he's right back on the knee with a, a leg, leg drop. drop. <laughs> yes, really. I mean, you have to say though, what type of sportsmanship though is it to go after the knee? Phil Powers and Dirt Bike Kid show great sportsmanship with green breaks. But Jason Cross really seems more interested in the victory than in his opponent's well-being. There, he continues to work almost sickeningly well, over as the they, knee of Mikey Whitbreak. As they say, Ross, all's fair in love and war. And in the Valentine's Day Massacre, we've got both. Yes, well, there's not many rules in professional wrestling. But Jason Cross is... And here we go with the Liger ball. One, two, two count there. Mikey As I was saying there, Jason Cross stretching the rules to their full extent. And Mikey trying to work up some support from the crowd. Yeah, the crowd now chanting Mikey's name, but I don't know how much that's going to help him, Ross. Jason Cross goes for another Liger bomb. And he's up on him. Mikey Whitmer gets a reversal with a Hurricanrana. One, two. About a two and a half count there. Mikey Whitbreak almost getting the victory there. Jason Cross just sneaking out the back door. I don't think he was quite expecting Mikey to come back there. Certainly not. Mikey really has, to, has even a problem standing. But it doesn't stop Jason Cross working over that knee. Mikey groans in agony there. I really feel for Mikey now. Jason Cross doesn't seem in any hurry to put Mikey away. I think he knows how badly Mikey's hurt. And I think he knows. Mikey reverses the whip. Jason Cross goes behind. Mikey goes behind again. Jason Cross one more time. Misses the elbow. And there's a Northern Lights suplex. That's one of Jason's trademark moves, but only a two count there. That's how he got the victory at last year's Ultra Chaos. Beating Over. Sir Sidney Lee. Yep, and uh, Mikey there again grasping his knee. I really don't know how much we can longer the uh, EWA officials can let this go on. Surely the referee, Ted Tanabe, has to make some kind of decision. I don't know if Mikey can look reasonably defend himself here. Well, Jason Cross is going to the top rope. This could be a finishing maneuver for the Welshman. But Mikey seems to be moving and he's shaking that top rope. And Jason Cross, well, do I have to say what he's feeling there? Mikey Whitrick. I don't think he does. What's he but doing? Is Mikey's this what going I think for the whipper snapper. He's going, he's pulled the whipper snapper. Whipper snapper! snapper. That's the bag. That's uh, surely. One, two, three, and oh my god! Mikey Whitbread goes through there with the whipper snapper. He pulled that one out of the back door, and now we see Mikey Whitbread against Dirt Bike Kid. This is going to be yet again a match between those two rivals. 
At the moment, they've had one quin fall each and a draw in all their meetings. Maybe this one is going to be the decider. However, I really don't know if Mikey's going to be ready for that match. Mikey, he has taken a severe, severe beating from Jason Cross there. Could we see another three-way dance? I mean, if Mikey just can't go on, does that mean that they'll show us we'll have Savu versus Van Damme or Alf Herman, or will they just put all the men into a three-way dance? Whoever goes through. Or will Savu and Alf Herman go to a draw? Who knows? But Mikey, I'm sure, will be trying to come back, but will the EWA officials bless him? We just have to wait and see, Kenny. Yes, folks, anything can happen here in the EWA. And Mikey there, the agony clearly showing on his face. He's having trouble even getting up the steps to leave the building. And I, I just...